I'm Archie Luxury and welcome to the program, fuckers. Welcome to the program, fuckers. And today, I'd like to talk about prestige cars. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I was growing up in the 1980s. And I remember as a kid, you know, the... Um, I remember I had a teacher in grade three, Mr. Wiltshire, who was a fucking mean, nasty bastard. But uh, he always wanted a Lamborghini. I never even knew what a fucking Lamborghini was. But um, I, I, I have that, you know, I found out. I, I also, when I was a kid, you know, we had a program on TV called Sale of the Century with Tony Barber. Carryover champion Andrew Lockett from Victoria. Stand by to see Andrew play for prizes valued at $75,081. Tonight on Australia's biggest bargain sale, we're offering a BMW valued at $39,500 for $475. A house full of furniture valued at $16,700 for $405. Two of the incredible bargains on sale of the century. And now, here's the star of our show, it's Tony Barber. Yes, it is. And uh, he used to always, it started off with Mercedes Benzes, then it went to BMWs, etc. And uh, I, I love the sale of the century cars, and, and uh, they, they were just so amazing. And, and one of the things i got to say is, this was the age of the W123. It's like the, the 280E or the 230E. They were cars that lasted. You could buy the... See, see the, the whole point of buying one of these cars is that they were a very well-made car. They were extremely well put together. With a bit of love and attention you could keep that car for a lifetime. That, that, that was the whole point of buying a Mercedes-Benz or a BMW. They, they, they were such a well-made car. They were a safe car. They were ahead of their time. And, you know, they were just such a cool thing. And uh, it, it's a strange thing. I mean, just that, that's the early 90s, sorry, early 80s early to mid 80s and, 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 and let's have a look at where we are now we're at a stage where stockbrokers don't exist you can do online trading chemists in Australia don't exist they're not the same discount pharmacy warehouse has slaughtered them Dan Murphy's for alcohol Bunnings for hardware we're in a very different world and uh, in the western world too there's no longer a public service exam that you can sit and get a job for life. No, it's all, you've got to upskill. We're told we're going to have seven career changes in our lifetime. It's a very different world than um, the early 1980s. And um, the same things happen with cars. And... You know, you, you no longer buy a BMW or a Mercedes to last a lifetime. It's now a consumer product. It's no longer something that is... It's no longer that well built. And um, it's very, very sad. It's very sad. I mean, the, 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 my, my, my thinking was the whole reason you pay two to three times the price of a normal car for a BMW or Mercedes was that they were so well built. They lasted and lasted. And that, that's not the reality. I mean, the reality is the car won't give up on you. The electronics and the complicated computer system in it will become unfeasible to repair. A case in point, have a look at these uh, these cars with these seven-speed DSG-type gearboxes. To replace the gearbox in these sort of cars is you're looking at seven to $12,000. It's a major expense. 
and if the car has got 150,000 kilometers on it, it may not be worthwhile, justified in putting that sort of money into it. And, and this is the whole thing, the quality car, does it exist anymore? And uh, I, I, had a, uh, I had an E30, I had an E30 BMW, and uh, I'm, I'm very sad I sold it. But it had, you know, it was a very, very simple car. I bought it, it was the last of the E30s. I bought it in 1991. It was an E30 318i, four door. It was brilliant red with a sunroof with the cream interior. I loved it. It had baked enamel paint. So, I mean, the paint job was like a tin plate. Yes, it could chip, but it was fucking, you put it into a special oven to get that paint baked on. The car didn't have a lot of electronics. It had fuel injection and it, it didn't even, ha it had a hand window so it had very little electronics in it. No ABS, um, it had disc brakes but no ABS and you, you know it was a manual. I mean you can't even buy a, a manual in a lot of cars now, you know, it's only this specialized, they're, they're using DSG type gearboxes. So, I mean, what's happening to this world here? You know, buying a prestige car, you'd buy one because it lasted so long. That's no longer the situation. It's no longer the situation. They're, they're now just an, you know, it's status and it's an upmarket consumer good. And uh, it, it, it makes me rather sad that, I mean, I, I thought the whole point in buying a Benz is to have a car that lasts, you know, 15 to 20 years. But it's not. It's just a more upmarket, everyday car. It's a, it's a sad realisation that things are no longer made to last. And... Um, it's very sad. They're using a lot of water-based paint. The paints are shit. A lot of the componentry is plastic. It fucking breaks. It's crap. They're not really designed like they, you know, they they they're designed. They are safer than they ever were. But the longevity is not engineered into them, and I think that's the biggest shame out of the lot. Why buy a luxury car if it's not going to really last longer than an ordinary car? I'm Archie Luxury, and I'd love to hear what my audience thinks on this topic. So, fuckers, tell me your car story. I want to hear it, and I want to share it with my audience. See you later, fuckers.